Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Chow With Loud. Today I'm giving you something really special. This is part of my childhood. As I was growing up, this was my absolute favorite Chinese dish in the whole world. And it's still up there with the very, very best dish I can think of. It is sweet and sour pork ribs, Hong Kong style. Let's do this. Right guys, the first thing I've got to do is prepare the ribs. I've got 700 grams of ribs here and we're going to chop them up into bite-sized chunks, okay? So for this I'm going to use something a little bit more heavy duty. Today I'm going to use my meat cleaver. Be careful with this and make sure you use the right implement and you take great care doing it. I don't want any fingers in your sweet and sour, that's not good luck. Okay, so here we go. So the next step is to marinate our ribs. And the first thing I'm gonna add is half a tablespoon of sesame oil. And a tablespoon of light soy sauce. And one teaspoon of sugar. Give it a good stir. Put some cling film over it and set it aside for half an hour to a couple of hours so it can absorb all the flavors. Next, we're gonna prepare our crispy coating and people who follow my channel will know that I've got a technique to make it extra crunchy. And that is, I'm gonna use a water spray bottle and just squirt a couple of times like so and then give it a stir. And what happens is that the water starts to make the flour stick into little kind of rocks. And when these are fried, these turn into bigger chunks of crispiness and therefore give the coating even more crunchiness. So we do this two or three times. As you can see, it's starting to lump up a little bit. Don't overdo it, otherwise you're gonna have a soggy mess. Okay, and one more time. One, two, three squirts and stir. That's all we need really. And it just gives it that extra bit of crunch. Perfect. I'm gonna add a nice big pinch of salt, a good grind of pepper, and for that extra flavor, I'm gonna put in about two teaspoons of garlic powder, just to give it extra, extra unctuousness. Get a fork and stir it all the way in. Next, we bring back our ribs and we're gonna crack an egg into them, just like so. And then we can give it a good massage. Okay, and this is gonna help bind the crispy coating to the ribs. makes a good sloshing noise, doesn't it? Something very therapeutic about this, I think. <laughs> then we bring in the cornflour and we add our ribs to the cornflour. And then we rub the ribs into the corn flour. This is why we use so much of it because we rub it in and it sticks and if we didn't have enough, it just go gloopy and stick together. And you just gotta keep at it and it will gradually all separate itself out, which is the beauty of this. It's quite easy, you just have to take your time with it, yeah. As you can see, it's sticking quite nicely, quite quickly. No problem there. Right people, we're ready for the frying stage. There it goes. Yep, that's fizzing nicely. As per usual, please be careful. This is very hot fat we are dealing with. Don't overload the oil because that'll increase the chances of frothing and boiling over and we definitely do not want that. Right, okay, I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit 
and I'm only going to put in a little bit at a time. There you go, that's it, nice. Okay, frothing away, just nice. Right guys, to make this easier on ourselves, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until the coating sets. And then we're gonna remove the ribs from the oil because we're gonna double fry them, i.e. we're gonna fry them again. And that will ensure that we don't try to burn anything or won't burn anything whilst we're waiting for the inside of the ribs to cook. Any Anything, any meat that has bone inside takes longer to cook. So therefore, we'll have to be careful that we don't burn our crispy coating whilst we're waiting for the insides to cook. So the easiest and safest thing to do is to do a double fry. So we'll wait for the temperature to get up on the oil again before we put our next batch in. Right guys, here we go again. Okay, so in between the two fries of the ribs, we are going to make our sweet and sour sauce, okay? So we're going to start with the aromatic. So I've got three cloves of finely chopped garlic and about half an inch of finely sliced ginger all in here. So we're going to put that in to some hot oil. Get that going. Of course, be careful not to burn the garlic. Garlic burns pretty easily. Okay. Mm, the smell of that is lovely. Okay, to that I'm going to add, let's do it right, to that we're going to add onions, peppers and some carrots, finely sliced carrots. And this will all add to the depth of flavour of this sauce. We don't want it to be just sweet and sour, we want we want extra flavour. So we're going to put a little bit more oil in there. Get it going. I'm going to add a pinch of salt to this, just to start bringing out that slight tinge of savouriness that we need in this one. Right, we're getting to the right stage for this, for these vegetables. I'm going to add five tablespoons of malt vinegar. That's our salmon. And then to that, I'm gonna add the same five tablespoons of tomato ketchup. A proper Chinese ingredient, I think you'll find. And five tablespoons of sugar. I never said this dish was good for you, right? Okay, I'm gonna add also some chunks of pineapple and from the tin, the juice. And that's gonna help us get a nice consistency because it'll give you that pineapple flavour, which again, sets a little bit of fruitiness to the taste. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more to that. And that should be about the right consistency. So that is about right. I'm going to just do a little taste test. Mm. Wow, that's good. Right. I'm going to take the heat off that and we're going to set it aside. Right guys, on to the second fry. Again, be very careful, a lot of hot oil. Okay, so when they're about 
nice and brown and golden like that, we should be about ready. Right guys, we're on to the last step. We're bringing our sweet and sour sauce back up to temperature. When we've got that vigorously going again, we're gonna add all our ribs into the sauce and then just stir it through, give it a flick. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, baby. And it should just coat everything nicely. Okay. And the smell coming off this is gorgeous. I swear it just looks amazing. I hope you can pick this up through the camera. I'm sure you can. But look at that. Now this reminds me of my childhood school holidays. We used to go to Alton Towers or we used to go tenpin bowling and always on the way back we stopped by at our favourite restaurant and we would always fight over these sweet and sour ribs. And now I can do it and I'm showing you guys how to do it as well. Look at that, okay? Excellent. It's not swamped in sauce. The whole point, it coats it so the crispy coating stays crispy and crunchy. Okay. And there you go, guys. We're done. Look at that. Right, guys. Tasting time. Ah, this looks amazing. Wow. Now that takes me back right back to my childhood. We would fight over these when we were in the restaurant. It's crunchy, it's sweet, got some sharpness. The meat is just tender, fall off the bone. And the marinade has made the pork really, really tasty and unctuous. It's delicious. Mm. In the end, use your fingers. And the meat is so, so tender. It's just amazing to die for. Honestly, if I had a dish I could eat every day forever, it would probably be this one. You have got to make it. And it takes a little while, but it is very, very easy to do. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. You've got to try this recipe. I honestly, honestly think it's probably one of the best ones on my channel. And if you do like it, please give us a subscribe like and comment, do all the good stuff, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys, bye bye.